Our final guest today is Ryan Lalonde. Ryan is president and partner of MLA Canada. He is the driving force behind MLA Canada's unique ability to push established boundaries for clients while helping them to find and create success. Please welcome to the stage, Ryan Lalonde. Can you give us Ryan's overview of the pre-sale market? <laughs> In like 30 seconds. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's, it's just an interesting time. Yeah. You know, we, we've heard from everyone up here, confusion was one of the words that shared, um, that, that resonates, I think it probably resonates for a lot of people in the audience and definitely for some of the home seekers that REW works with. I oh, think yeah. for us, uh, I think the challenging part right now is that there's so many different market for market forces. We're trying to understand what they mean. Um, feel like we're in a privileged position, you know, for, from, from my perspective, you know, we have some really smart people within the shop, mm -hmm. uh, specifically around advisory that, that give us access to some really incredible data to make, to make better decisions. What we're learning in the market right now is, is that there's a lot of optimism, yet it's conservative yeah. in nature. And there, there is the belief that, uh, the first part of this year, you know, a lot of decision-making is going to center both home buyers and home builders around zone defense, mm -hmm. right? Let's be patient. Let's be flexible. Let's, let's try to learn and understand. And I think the back half of this year will, will focus most of its efforts around adjusting that strategy, thinking a little bit more with abundance and optimism. And I think that we're going to see the market respond. And I think that rates, rates will play a big role in that as we move into, you know, Q3 and Q4 of mm -hmm. 2023. I was going to ask you about buyer <laughs> by your shifts, but it sounds like yeah. you answered that for the most part. I think cautious optimism is really what you're saying. Yeah, I think so. I mean, buyer shifts is just like, it's such an open-ended conversation right now. Like, you know, when you think about buyer profiles, for example, and how they've really moved around a little bit, COVID has been interesting because there's been this big, big shift in how people think about housing and what they're like, what they're willing to tolerate, right? We have these big demographic dynamics right now at play where, you know, downsizers with COVID just took a big step back from work, right? And we're yeah. trying to fill that in and we're seeing that in terms of like 150,000 new jobs last month, which I don't wow. think I don't think anyone expected that. And then to the younger generations, right? Who have the responsibility of learning from the old, they're having to backfill quickly. That's that's not easy for us no. um, or for them. And then Gen X's, Gen, uh, Gen Z's, Gen Y's, you know, they're, they're moving into housing, they're establishing, I think their economic footprint, mm -hmm. right? They're doing a really good job of that. And I think their values are different than the previous generations. And so we saw this really turbulent moment in time. And, and I think as a result of that, housing form is changing, demand's changing. Yep. Um, they're willing to drive a little bit further. They're willing to demand that how you think about work is different tomorrow than it was yesteryear. And as a result of that, that shifts values. And I think that we're in this state of, of, of choppy water for some time to try to understand how those values land. And then you drop in some things like interest rate and it's a, it's a really, exciting time for the market. Speaking on demographics and jobs, there's some pretty lofty immigration numbers. Speak to us about that. Everyone in this room, if you're tied to real estate, you got to be excited about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Canadian government has made it very clear that we have a budget problem long term. Yeah. And uh, we're going to grow GDP and we're going to, to quote, maybe Nick from advisory, we're going to throw that ball down the field, maybe 40 years by continuing to just bring a lot of people into the business of buying homes, which is happening through immigration. Um, big, big numbers that are, that we're hitting, Yeah. right? They set some targets and it's actually nice because the government's delivering on those targets right now, which, you know, if only we could do that municipally. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I think what's interesting about it though, is like, if you start adding up some of those numbers around immigration, 430,000 last year, 465 this year, 485, 500, you like kind of start extrapolating that out over the next, over the next 10 years, just some quick division on it. It was like, I, I did this last night. It was like 15%. It's not insignificant. No, it's, we're at 38 million, right? So like that's 15% yeah. of, of Canada's population in, in a 10 year period. Like that's just an incredible supply. And, and I think what's really exciting about it is two things. One housing, which is important. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other is, is productivity, right? Like for Canada to, to survive on a world stage for us to be productive, right? For us to actually hold to the values of being Canadians, which is like work ethic and, and kicking ass on a world stage, like innovation. Uh, we need skilled labor and, and at least half of those new immigrants will be focused around economic class, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, and we're so fortunate because we have uh, a country where the best in the world do desire to live here uh, and immigrate here. And so that gives us access to just 
great skill sets, yeah. right? That, that are going to set us apart from, I think, many other countries. And so it's like hard not to be optimistic about what immigration does for us. And then at some point, the people in this room are focused around like, how do we give them housing, right? How yes. do we supply that to them? All right. I can't seem to have a conversation without talking about ChatGPT, so I'm just going to bring it up. <laughs> I've been obsessed with it. I don't know how all you have felt. Um, Ryan, how do you think it's going to impact our industry? For our industry, it's already here. Yeah. Um, that's the reality of it. And I think that probably some are getting caught up. Some, this might be the first time they've heard about it, and others, they're, they're well down that path. But for our industry, I think right now, uh, Kevin said it really well, we have diff a difficult cost market, a difficult interest market, uh, we have historical land buys. The burn on those monthly with, with rising interest rates is, is heavy. All of us, every single person, is looking for ways of maximizing productivity right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, ChatGBT will be a, a part of that solution. What's really interesting about it is, is, for the most part, it's artificial intelligence that relies on really big data sets. Right. And our industry is going to have to figure out how to use it. But I would be very surprised. There, there's some really great development companies uh, in the room today. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bet that I would make would not be against or not be on the wrong side of how many of them are leveraging it to understand how to build more efficient floor plans, how to build more efficient workflows, how to build more efficient cost structures Absolutely. within. Um, and it's going to impact everything from how you design all the way through to the risk uh, analysis that's going to be performed by your lenders on, on whether or not you're uh, an appropriate or suitable um, uh, team to finance. There's been a lot that's changing every quarter, which is confusing even, I think, to industry folk, let alone home seekers. If we could break it down for what home seekers should or could expect per quarter, could you do that for us for 2023? Oh, I can give it a rip. Cool. You know, so I think that we just witnessed Lunar New Year. Yes. And, and uh, maybe the big opportunity there, all of us were nervous coming into this year what 2023 was going to hold for mm -hmm. us. Um, zone defense is something that we've been talking a lot about. And I think that those that put themselves out there with strong incentives, they reap those rewards. I think that what the market showed is that uh, there is depth at a certain price point. Steve talked about rates, what's going on um, uh, in the resale marketplace. And I think for the most part, uh, when it came to pre-sale, uh, if you discounted something between three and 8% through the month of January relative to market rates of pre-sale pricing, uh, you found success. Hmm. You probably did more home sales than what you were bar what we were budgeting for. And I think that we're going to see the rest of this quarter probably organize around some of those incentives being extended out. I think Q2 is going to be a tricky one. Um, I think that we're going to see some pause. We're going to see new programs come into the marketplace that have to that have to dig deep. And right now, uh, what we're trying to understand and what we're learning about is what is the hurdle rate? What is that discount hurdle rate to achieve to achieve a pre-sale test? A year ago, you'd have rising incentives, right? Rising pricing. So you start low, you, you increase gradually. Right. Today, you're having a discount dramatically below and revenue. And further each time. Further each time, okay. but certainly having a discount below what you're probably comfortable with from a performance standpoint mm -hmm. to achieve a pre-sale test. And I think that's going to be the big shift in, in Q2 is some of, those, some of the, the brands that missed Q1 are going, to, are going to be hunting for those transactions. I think Q3 is going to organize around sentiment that comes out of summer months with maybe interest rate planning. Um, we're at a moment in time where we hope to see the job market maybe, mm -hmm. maybe tighten up a little bit, mm -hmm. right? I, I'd hope that we, we are uh, not in a moment of time where, we, where we're expecting higher interest rates. And if that happens, I think that sentiment really finds its way into the marketplace and drives strong home sales. The back half of this year, we think, are, is going to be a really big year for pre-sale pricing. In terms of escalating and and uh, and so I think Q3, Q4 will be focused, you know, around hopefully developers having an opportunity to sell at numbers that make sense for Performa, mm -hmm. not having to massively discount the front end of these sales programs and making it up in the back end, um, because ultimately what we do need is density to come to market, and that can only yeah. happen if we can finance it. You touched on pricing just there. Um, I heard escalation, but if there's any more on that, I was just going to ask you where you saw a pricing and appreciation, even at this time next year. I think the first half of this year is going to be tricky. Mm -hmm. um, what's really what's really positive, though, is that prices, um, it's tough to say whether they're holding in pre-sale. Woodframe's doing a great job of that, hmm. right? I think for the most part, they Woodframe doesn't have the scale to make it up on the back end. And so um, development partners are working really hard to maximize value, lean in, make sure that we have the right fit with home buyers as a result of that. 
Um, their pricing from start to finish doesn't see as much movement. I think towers are a little bit of a different approach. They're a different animal right now. But my guess is that by the time that we're October, November of this year, mm -hmm. uh, we have really strong tailwinds. And uh, I'd be willing to bet that we're looking at double digit returns on price point from that point forward. I guess actually I should ask you, you, you shared a lot with us, but I'm sure there is still one thing you can peel out in terms of your biggest prediction for this year. I'm going to just kind of lean in and maybe draft behind Kev a little bit. I think mm -hmm. anyone, whether uh, a home buyer or uh, a home builder, if they're able to take a step back right now and appreciate that the most important mindset that you can have is one of flexibility and to spend your time learning because there are so many opportunities in the marketplace across every geography right now. Yeah, There truly are. Like you can find value and deals in so many different places. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if you can take the time and be patient, um, you're going to make a, a really strong decision. And I think for our development partners, anyone that that is leaning in to product and really building out layers in their programs and building out value in the offering, I think they're going to find a lot of success in the latter part of this year and throughout 2024. Thank you so much, Ryan. It's always awesome to speak to you.